On the night of 28th October, dark clouds covered the sky above the Caribbean Sea. The sea began to surge and a terrifying roar echoed in the air. This storm was named Hurricane Melissa. It was no ordinary storm but rather the most powerful hurricane of 2025. It first hit the southwest coast of Jamaica and when it struck the land, its speed was around 300 km per hour. The winds were so fast that roofs were blown off, trees uprooted and the entire country seemed to freeze in an instant. Within just a few hours, 77% of Jamaican homes lost power, hospitals were damaged and many roads were completely wiped out. Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness said, Wherever Melissa went, there was only destruction. The biggest challenge now is to rebuild the country after this devastation. The government declared a state of emergency and thousands of people were sent to relief camps. But before relief efforts could even begin, the storm moved to its next destination, Cuba. According to Meteorological Department, there was a forecast of 20 inches of rain and dangerous storm surges in Cuba. The Cuban government had already relocated more than 5 lakh people to safe areas. President Miguel Diaz Canal said, This is the most powerful storm in the history of our country. We must remain disciplined and face this disaster a united. Now the question is, how did Hurricane Melissa become so powerful? The answer is directly linked to climate change. According to scientists, the sea surface temperature has increased by about 1 to 1.5 degrees Celsius over the past few decades. This warm water provides energy to hurricanes. When the water is warmer, the storm becomes more powerful. Hurricane Melissa has dealt a severe blow to Jamaica's economy. According to the government, billions of dollars will be spent on relief and reconstruction efforts. Meanwhile, around 15,000 people are staying in relief camps, where there is a severe shortage of water, electricity and medicines. Many villages still have not been contacted. This shows how vulnerable small island nations are to climate change. From an environmental perspective, Melissa has created new dangers. Jamaica's health department has warned that due to the floods, crocodiles may leave their natural habitats and enter residential areas. People have been advised not to approach flood waters and remain vigilant. Additionally, due to the hot and humid environment, there is an increased risk of diseases such as dengue, malaria and cholera. Health terms are being sent to affected areas, but work is slow due to a lack of resources. People in Cuba are also scared. President Miguel Diaz-Canal said in his speech, This is not just a storm. It is a test of our patience and discipline. Cuba has deployed military forces for relief work, closed schools, but meteorologists says that both the speed and direction of Melissa remain highly uncertain, making it difficult to estimate the exact damage. The impact of Hurricane Melissa is not just local, it will affect the entire region's economy. Food and energy supplies in the Caribbean have been disrupted. Marine trade on the southern coasts of the United States has been interrupted and global insurance companies will have to deal with billions of dollars in claims. According to the United Nations report, such superstorms are becoming the new normal. This is a major warning that if the Earth's temperature continues to rise, such storms will become even more powerful in the future. In the last 50 years, the average sea surface temperature of the Atlantic Ocean has risen by approximately 0.8 degrees Celsius. While this may seem like a small difference, its effect is massive. Just a 1 degree change can increase the storm speed by up to 100 km per hour. By 2050, it is estimated that nearly 100 million people will live in coastal areas that will be directly affected by cyclones. For small island nations, there is an existential crisis and for countries like India, it is a serious warning. Our Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea are also warming rapidly. This is why storms like Amphan, Tukate have become more powerful in recent years. Hurricane Melissa teaches us three important lessons. 
First, we must adapt to climate change. This means making our disaster management systems, relief centers and coastal infrastructures climate resilient. Second, global cooperation is essential. Small island countries need technical and financial support which developed countries must provide immediately. Third, the world must transition to clean energy quickly. Without reducing our dependence on fossil fuels, we cannot stop the climate crisis. Hurricane Melissa will pass. Jamaica and Cuba will rebuild one day. But this storm has made us realize how helpless humanity becomes when nature is enraged. This is not just a natural disaster but a warning. Climate change is no longer a distant issue. It is the trust of our time. If we don't act now, the next Melissa must arise from our own shores. Viewers, let's conclude the discussion here and note today's question. Rising tropical storms for small island nations like Jamaica and Cuba are not just natural disasters, but indicators of existential crisis. Analyze this statement in the context of climate change. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.